Hi everyone, I'm Imran Rafai and I'm absolutely delighted to start a brand new video series on the Cisco Secure Access Control Server. Welcome, join me and we will tame this beast. What is AAA? It is pronounced as AAA, not AAA. -A -A. And for our American audience, it is not Automobile Association of America or American Automobile Association. It is derived from the first letter of the following three functions, that is authentication, authorization, and accounting. Authentication just tells the device if the user can log in. Authorization tells what the user can do. Accounting just logs whatever the user does on the device. AAA has two popular protocols, namely the RADIUS protocol and the TACAX Plus protocol. We'll learn a little more about them a little later in the series, but for now, just know there are two popular protocols. On a very basic setup, if AAA is enabled, and if it is configured on the border device, like for instance the uh, Cisco ASA, then this ASA will authenticate or authorize the users coming in by contacting the Cisco ACS. Now, if the ACS says that user is authorized to enter that device, it will allow the user to um, access the network. And in this setup, the ASA, because it sits on the border and it controls access to the network, it is also called as the network access controller. What is Cisco Secure ACS? Well, Cisco's ACS is nothing but Cisco's implementation of the AAA model. It centralizes identity management and access policy. When I say it centralizes identity management and access policy, we need to know what happened before the ACS. Before ACS, if you wanted to create an authentication uh, for a Cisco device, we had to configure the local database. So you would go there and give a username and password. Now that's fine if it's one device or one user, but think about a situation where you might have 100 devices and about 1000 users. Even if you were to take the pain and configure thousand users on all these all of these hundred devices maybe that's fine but what happens if one user goes away and a new user comes in again you have to go to all these hundred devices and make the changes now that's a limitation of a standalone system ACS overcomes that problem by making all the identity management and access policy management on the ACS server the device just communicates with this ACS server and finds out what the user can do or if the user is allowed to log into a certain device. It does this over the RADIUS protocol or the TACAX Plus protocol. ACS server also supports external databases like the Microsoft Active Directory where the user identity management could stay on Active Directory and ACS will just take those the, the database from Microsoft Active Directory and use in this setup. The Cisco ACS comes in two modes. It comes as a software version or the hardware version. The hardware version is regular, like, like a regular device of, of uh, the Cisco. But the software version comes in an ISO image which uh, is, is, is a combination of its operating system, a Linux operating system, and the ACS software. You could run it on a virtual machine, or you could run it on a, a, a standalone server. For our videos, we would be using the Cisco uh, ACS software version running on a virtual machine. By the time you see this video, I would have already made a miscellaneous video showing you how to install the virtual machine, how to configure Cisco ACS on that virtual machine, and how to connect the virtual machine Cisco ACS to the GNS. So that would be on another miscellaneous video. Look out for it, and I'm sure you will get that. We discussed about RADIUS and TACX. 
Now let's let's learn a little bit more about radius and tech hacks because we would be dealing with radius and tech hacks all through this video series. Radius is nothing but a short form for remote authentication dial in user service. The authentication and authorization bit of it is defined in RFC 2865 and the, uh, the accounting bit of uh, RADIUS is defined in RFC 2866. RADIUS is an open standard. It was developed in 1991 and later brought into the IETF standards. RADIUS is used more for the administration of the network user. We will, we will see what this means when we do our practicals a little late in the series. But for now, just remember that RADIUS is for network user. And RADIUS also uses UDP port 1645 and 1646 for legacy and 1812 and 1813 for standard ports. RADIUS supports three basic functions. As we know, authentication, authorization, and accounting. But in authorization, RADIUS supports only the exec authorization. And even in accounting, it just supports exec accounting. What this means is that RADIUS just has the capability to let the device know at what privilege level the user can come in. It cannot control anything more than that. It cannot tell what a user, what commands a user can access, what commands a user cannot access. For that, we will have to use Tech Hacks Plus. Radius will soon be replaced by a new protocol called Diameter, which is defined under RFC 3588. Now coming to TACAX Plus, TACAX Plus is the short form for Terminal Access Controller Access Control System Plus. The plus is because TACAX was an open standard. And when Cisco took over this and added a lot of functionality to TACAX, they started calling it TACAX Plus. So TACAX Plus is Cisco proprietary. TACAX Plus is used more for administration of network devices as compared to RADIUS, which is more into administration of network user. Another thing, another major difference between RADIUS and TACAX is TACAX uses TCP port 49. So this is something that we need to know if we are, if we have an AC, ASA, for instance, between the uh, AAA client and the ACS server, TCS port 49 will have to be opened. Otherwise, we will not have the communication between the client and the ACS server. Compared to RADIUS, TACAX Plus has two extra functions, that is command authorization and command accounting. Like I mentioned, command authorization and accounting tells what the user can do, what commands the user can use, what commands the user cannot use, and accounting just logs those extra commands that the user uses. Role-based access control. Before we learn a little more about role-based access control, let's try to find out the situation where role-based access control is an ideal solution. Let's go to GNS3. I will be using GNS3 as uh, our uh, iOS uh, um, simulation, or emulation rather. Very simple topology, there's router R1 and router R2, they're sitting on a network of 20.1.1.0 slash 24 with dot one on R1 and dot two on R2. Now let's assume a situation where um, there, are, there are two departments, the sales department and the marketing department. Let's assume for some reason the, market, the sales department needs access to only router configuration so they should be able to uh, go into enable they should be able to go into config mode from config mode they should be able to get access to router configuration they should be able to do all the igp the inter the uh, internal gateway pro uh, routing protocols like they should be able to configure eigrp router rep router ospf anything they should also have access to interface now, marketing department also needs access to interface, both the interfaces, any interfaces, 
marketing department needs, but for router, only sales department need access. Now, basically, iOS, Cisco iOS routers works on privilege levels. Let me try telneting to router 1. So, telnet 20.1.1.1. It says password required, but none set. Now, that's because on line VTY 0 to 4, we do not have a password set, and the device is trying to locally authenticate. So let me go to config T, do show run section line. Now if you see here, as soon as it populates, yeah. You can see that line VTY 04, it says login is required. So when I say login, and there's nothing beyond that, that says it's login local, locally that's on the line. So it's checking for a login password. So when I say login, it says login password, checking for the password on this line. So let me go ahead, line VTY04, password, uh, Cisco. Now let's try the same thing again. It says password. I type in Cisco and I'm in. Let me see what privilege I land on. So I land on privilege one. Can I enable? Not really, because I'm, I have not yet set the enable password. Now one thing we need to remember is that when I say enable, it's nothing but saying enable 15. Enable password is not set, so it's not going to let me in. Let's put an enable password here. Enable password enable. Let's see what happens now when I say enable. It is letting me go in and if I see the privilege it is at privilege 15. Now if you remember the amount of commands that I have on privilege 15 is a big list. Now let me do this. If you can see I have access to everything here. At the same time the number of commands that I have access to when I am at privilege 1, let me show you, I am at privilege 1 and the command access that I have to is much much less and much smaller list. Now in iOS routers there are three default privilege levels, that's the privilege 0, privilege 1 and privilege 15. Privilege 0, there's very little you can do. Privilege 1, you can do a little more. You can do things like show, you can do clear, you can do connect, and things that you see on screen right now. On privilege 15, you have access to everything. Now, if I were to... Um, if, I, if I wanted somebody else, like for instance, if I had, like I mentioned, if I had... Uh, two users, two uh, user departments, the sales department and the marketing department and I wanted some commands with the sales department and some commands with the marketing department. I don't want the command that say I give access to uh, sales, I don't want marketing department to access it and similarly some of the command that marketing department have access, I don't want the sales department to access. I also want some commands that both of them can access. So can I do that using privilege? Well, the answer is no, I cannot. The reason is if I, let's say for instance, assign sales department privilege 5 and I give them access to, for instance, uh, router, configuration for router, routing protocols. Then if I give marketing department the same privilege, obviously they get access to that. If I give them any privilege, higher than 5, if I give them a privilege level of 6, by default they get every right, every um, access that a privilege level below them get. So whatever privilege level 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and 0 has, privilege level 6 will get access to those commands as well. Now that is a problem. Before that, we will try giving a local database, let's see what happens if you want a username and password. So we'll create a local username, username Cisco or user1, password, 
user1 and we'll go to line with ty 0, 4 and we'll give instead of just login which is login password we'll give login local now let's try the same command again telnetting this time instead of just asking for the password if you see if you remember last time it just asks us for the password um, that's here just the password but this time it's asking us for a username so we give them user1 password user1 what privilege are we landing in? show privilege it's in privilege 1 do we have access to enable? yes because we have set the enable password so enable 15 it takes us straight to enable 15 now if I want to give a local database now for instance let's go here let me create two users user name sales privilege 5 password sales username market privilege 6 password market sorry my mistake Now, let me try accessing with their, with those usernames. So again, internet, sales, password sales, show privilege. I'm landing straight on privilege 5 because that's a privilege 5 user. Same way with username market, I give user password market, show privilege that's privilege 6 so now they're landing on privilege 5 and privilege 6 but we haven't we since both of them like I, like I mentioned privilege 1 and privilege 15 in between all the privilege levels they do not have any special command they get the same command as privilege 1 now on privilege 1 here I cannot type configure terminal that's not a valid command because configure terminal is a privilege 15 command now suppose I go here and I say privilege exit mode in, in exit mode the privilege will give level 5 um, we will say the commands we need is configure terminal now what we did is configure terminal by default is a privilege 15 command what we did by this command is we brought down the privilege level of configure terminal command to level 5 now let's see what happens now we are in show privilege we are in marketing one we are in privilege 6 but can we type config terminal absolutely yes we can because privilege 5 has got access to config terminal so can we now that's a problem now in this way if we were to assign privilege level access to level 5 level 6 gets it by default now that's not what we want to overcome this problem we have something called the R back like we were mentioning so that was a situation where we tried assigning privilege levels to different user we modified privilege levels but you know the drawbacks high privilege level gets everything the low privilege level gets separating commands using privilege level is not possible because I mentioned like I mentioned every privilege level every command that a low privilege level can access the higher privilege by default can access so what's the solution the solution then is R back using parser view let me show you how we go back we go down to exit mode we will enable 
view. That's a requirement. Now, enable view has three basic requirements. They are AAA should be enabled, the enable password must be set, and thirdly, in, in our method list of AAA, none method list must not be set. Let me reiterate that once again. The three condition requirement for RBAC are AAA must be enabled. Let me try putting it here. AAA must be enabled. Enable password must be set. AAA method list must not contain none method. These are the three conditions for our back or parser view to be enabled. So let's go back. Let's enable AAA. It's a very simple command. AAA new model. AAA is enabled. In iOS, we need to enable it by using this command. In an ASA, it's enabled by default. Next, we need to do enable. The, enable, the second condition is enable password must be set. In our case, it's already set with the password enable. And thirdly, you should not have a AAA method list pointing to the method none. In our case, we do not have any method list. We will learn a little bit of method list and what it is in later series when we do AAA authentication. But for now, we don't need to go there. So let's go and enable view. It's asking for a password, which is E N A B L. Now, parser view has three types of view. One is the root view, from where you can configure all the other views. Then we have the CLI view, which is the view that you create, or the custom view as it is called. And the third, we have a super view, which actually takes reference to many other views, many other custom views, and has a super view, which can do anything the other two views can do. We'll see that in a little more detail. So, show parser view. You can see the current view is root. We'll go into view. We say parser view and the name sales. We say command include uh, command at exec level at exec level we should include configure terminal oh, before we do that we need to set up a, a password so we put secret Cisco 123. So let's do the same command again. This command says that for this sales view from the exec level, exec level is when you do enable the privilege exec mode. So Commands at exec level should include configure terminal. That's what it says. Next, we can give commands at configure. Configure mode should include, we'll say include exclusive. That means only sales should have access to router and everything under router. So router EIGRP, router RIP, router blah, blah, blah. 
We can put all that. By just saying router, that means it takes everything under router. Um, we can put one more, commands, configure, include, interface, fast ethernet, zero slash zero. We'll exit from here. We'll create another parser view, parser view, market, secret, Cisco 123, commands, okay, you can go back and put that over, commands, exit, we'll also give these people market configure terminal, otherwise they will not be able to go into config mode. We will try giving the same command that we gave them about routers. If you remember, it was include exclusive. Let's see what happens. When we try giving include exclusive that we had given for somebody else, it will not let us use here, telling that it is already include exclusive for somebody else. We will try fast ethernet 01, which we will give to market. I will exit here. We will create two extra new usernames. Uh, I think we already have usernames. Let me just quickly have to show run section username. Yeah, we have a username sales, and but then we can't use that, so I will change that. So we'll say note them. We'll say note them. Now, username, sales, view, sales, password, Cisco123, username, market, view, market, the capital bit, the, the, the small letter sales can be anything, but this has to be exactly the name of this view that you created and again here market it has to be exactly the same as the view that you created password cisco123 now let's try tell it from here and we will log in with sales Cisco one two three password. Show parser view. There's no view currently in privilege level context. Now that is because we have to do one more thing. We have to use something called triple A authorization at exec. We need auth z. It's just a name. So basically it says AAA should be enabled for authorization at privilege exec mode. The name of that method list is auth z. We use local. And then we go into line line vty04 and say authorization exec AUTH set. Now let's try that again. We log in with sales. Password is Cisco123. Show parser view. Current view is sales. Brilliant. Now we'll see what this sales view can do. Remember, the last time we were here, we could see a lot of other things, but right now, you only have enable and config. So we'll do config. Normally, from this mode, you cannot access config terminals, but we can. Config terminal, because config is allowed. Now, again, let me do a question mark. If you can see, route do and exit. Other than that, you only have router command. So if you do router, and do question mark, it gets access to everything under router. Let's so similarly, let's try on the market. So let's try logging in with market. 
So market Cisco one two three show parser view he's in market view column T question mark he has access to a uh, So maybe I when we give when we give command so maybe basically you get the idea. So we had I think we made a mistake by giving this interface commands, we just have to give interface. But that's that's a crux of it. Basically you create two different views and through that you can control user. Now this becomes a, a shortcut. It's, it's not the proper solution, but this is a solution that you can do without ACS. So, what ACS does is ACS combines all this. It does the identity management for you, the, uh, the policy management for you, accounting for you. That's why we need ACS. So, I've uh, in this video, we have found out the real requirement for an ACS server. And I hope as we go ahead in the series, we will see different ways of how ACS makes an administrator's life very, very easy. So let's just review what we did today. We discussed what AAA is. We discussed about Cisco Secure ACS. We discussed about AAA protocols, RADIUS and TACACs. And we discussed how role-based access control is done on an iOS device. That is all we have for you today. Thank you for watching. Please visit our website for more videos and hope to see you very soon. Bye-bye.